Obviously for Trek, biking is a huge thing. So we want to encourage that as much as possible. Um, so we set up our commuter program. Our commuter program encourages people to ride their bike to work more often. Um, on top of that, we also talk about being green a lot. And I believe Trek was the first Wisconsin manufacturer to go completely green energy, so we don't use any coal energy. So we talk about green a lot, and we try to practice that at the same time. So we will reward our employees for doing the right thing by carpooling to work. We'll give each employee up to a dollar a day to carpool to work. On top of that, they'll get an awesome pre premium front row parking spot if they do that. We also just have changed that to hybrid vehicles as well. So we actually have our hybrids up front as well, so rewarding green again. But moreover, we want people to bike to work, so we'll give them up to $4 a day to do that, or walk or run. Um, also a cool spot to park in our commuter room, which is a separate space outside of our, uh, right adjacent to our building that holds about 180 bikes. So in the summer, we have a mechanic out there to help them fix bikes, but it's a really easy, convenient way to uh, park your bike. The question is, does it work? I think the answer is yes. People ride their bikes a lot more often, a lot more frequently. You know, some of the stats from 2013 are pretty mind-blowing if you, if you start thinking about it. Um, Eight million calories that we save by just commuting to work. Um, if Trek can get people to commute to work, I think anyone can. If you've ever been to Waterloo, trust me, not many of our employees live in Waterloo, so they're coming from someplace else, from Madison, from Lake Mills, you name it. Um, so they have a long ways to go to get there. So it's not an easy commute down the street, so people definitely take advantage of that. Mary talked a little bit about food and nutrition. For us, this was a huge, huge game changer. Uh, our cafe, um, we call it the barn. Again, tying back to our roots down on Jackson Street where we started uh, in 1976 with five employees. So our motif in there is a little rustic, I guess you'd call it, so barnish, I don't know. Um, but the biggest change we had in our cafe was controlling what we own, our own destiny. Um, so when 2007, when all that stuff happened, the other thing we did was we, and no offense if there's any food vendors in here, we threw out our, la our, our national food vendor uh, and we hired our own two chefs. Why? Because we can start to control that. You know, they're in it for business, they're in it for profit, we understand that. So if they want to, you know, sell hamburgers for two bucks, they're going to make a lot of money and they know that and they're going to continue to do that. We didn't want that anymore, so we said we're going to bring this in-house. We're going to change the culture and we're going to change what people are eating while they're here at work. A big game changer for us. Next thing we did was we implemented our, our Twinkie tax. So maybe you've heard this, um, we talk about it a lot. But essentially what it is is we didn't get rid of every unhealthy option in there. We still do have hamburgers in there, but you're going to pay six fifty dollars for a small hamburger. Now with that money that we get in return, we subsidize our salad bar to be the cheapest option in our cafe. So I like to tell all of our new hires that if you can make a $5 salad at Trek, you've done something pretty special and you probably have to carry it like a football on your way out. So it's the cheapest, most affordable option. Um, we do a lot of other things as far as nutrition goes. Things like sourcing food locally, we believe in that. We work with a lot of local vendors in our cafe. I should also say that we do kind of have a monopoly on food. Again, if you've ever been to Waterloo, no offense if you're from there, there isn't much going on there. So like, we don't have a plethora of different places that you can eat, so we got the best restaurant in town. Um, we, just, we source as much as we can locally. 40% of our food in our cafe is sourced from the state of Wisconsin. So pretty good, considering we still do work with larger vendors, we, we have to do that. But we're trying to get away from that and try to get more to bringing it closer and closer to track. For example, we, again, a partnership with a local business. Uh, McKay Nursery is in Waterloo. Um, maybe you've seen the commercials, I think something like color it green or something like that. But basically we reached out to them and said, we know you have a big garden that you guys have been growing. Can we get some of that produce in here? And they were more than happy to do that. So they actually said, we'll supply you with our fresh organic stuff and we'll put it right in our salad bar. So over the summer, obviously, um, we had as much fresh local produce as possible. Um, the other thing we get quite a bit um, from my employees is, you know, well, Marcus, it's easy to eat here healthy, right? Two meals a day. I go home. I can't feed a family. I don't know how to do that. It's too hard. It costs too much. Well, we said, all right, well, let's make it easy and convenient for you. You know, we'll, we'll do what we call our meals to go. So you can come in at 10 o'clock in the morning, talk to Matt or Dan, our chefs, 
and they'll get you a meal ready to go by the time you get home in the afternoon. You can, the cooking instructions right on it. So it's super convenient. One serving, 10 servings, whatever you want, you can go and get a take and bake option that's gonna always be a healthy option. Now the last one I put on here, I don't know if it's a wellness thing or not, but definitely our employees like this. So this goes back to culture, it's free coffee. So we actually partner with Colectivo here in Madison to offer uh, free coffee on tap all day, every day. Now for me, I think it's a mindfulness thing. So I get to work, I have to have my coffee and I still, uh, maybe it's just one of my vices, but it's super nice to have uh, the ability to have free coffee. And, and, and trust me, our employees like it to the tune of, I think 30 to $40,000 worth of coffee every year. So we definitely drink our fair share of coffee. <laughs>